The Miami Dolphins, a once dominant team, a really, really long time ago. The Dolphins haven't won a playoff game since 2000, and they've only made the playoffs five times since then. But they have made it the past two seasons, the first two years under head coach Mike McDaniel. He's done a good job, and making the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons is a big deal. But now, they've lost to the Bills and the Chiefs in back-to-back -back years. The Chiefs feel relatively unbeatable and are just the juggernaut in today's NFL, but the Bills have slipped up a little bit. Bit, and it's very possible that Miami could be the new kings of the AFC East. Apart from McDaniel, Tua Tagovailoa is the other big factor. He's been a major topic for a long time now. He made a big jump in 2022 after the Dolphins went from Brian Flores to Mike McDaniel at head coach, and he had 25 touchdowns and 8 interceptions, but he did only play in 13 games because of some concussion issues. Luckily, he came back good in 2023 and just led the league with 4,624 yards and had 29 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. His play is a huge decider on how good the Dolphins are and can be. Miami definitely has the potential to be a really good football team, and a lot of that has to do with Mike McDaniel and Tua Tungavailoa, and the rest of the roster that surrounds them. So pretty much everything. The Dolphins have made some pretty big moves this offseason, and now you can kind of add Odell Beckham Jr. to that list if you want. He wasn't too bad in Baltimore last season with 565 yards and three touchdowns. Still, wasn't anything too crazy, but it was his best season since 2019, which was his first year in Cleveland. Odell didn't play in 2022 and was a huge part of the Rams' Super Bowl run back in 2021, but more so in the postseason before he tore his ACL. Before 2020, he had five 1,000-yard seasons in his first six years in the pros. The only one that he didn't, he only played in four games because of a fractured ankle. He hasn't had a fantastic career since, but it'll be nice only having to be the third option in Miami. They did also sign tight end Jonu Smith, who is coming off of a career-high 582-yard season with the Falcons last year. Aaron Brewer signed a three-year deal, and he should be the new starting center now that Connor Williams is gone, but I think really the biggest free agency additions for Miami have been on defense. They've got some serious dudes now. Safety Jordan Poyer is a huge one. He's coming from rival Buffalo, where he was an all-pro, but recently got released. He's dealt with a lot of injuries over the last couple of years, but it'll be interesting to see what he can do in Miami. Shaquille Barrett is a big-name linebacker from the Bucks. He missed 10 games over the last two years, but was really really good in Tampa for three years. Miami also gave linebacker Jordan Brooks a three-year, $30 million deal after his time in Seattle. He had 513 combined tackles over four seasons playing the middle of the field. They also signed Anthony Walker Jr., who should play inside. He's landed on injured reserve for three straight seasons, but does have 79 career starts over seven years. Then, the Dolphins did unfortunately lose both Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis at defensive tackle and have decided to replace them with seven different defensive tackles. Chris Greer is essentially just channeling his inner Billy Bean, trying to replace Jason Giambi. Then the Dolphins also got cornerback Kendall Fuller. He should be the dude on the other side of Jalen Ramsey and has started 93 games mostly in Washington since 2016 and won a ring with the Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. The Dolphins brought in a lot of good football players in the offseason. Free agency went pretty good for them, and they followed it up with a solid draft. So the Dolphins had the 21st overall pick of the draft and used it on defensive and Chop Robinson. He was a big name in college and an absolute stud at Penn State. His first year in college was in 2021 at Maryland, but then he decided to transfer to Penn State. He had a good sophomore season with 26 tackles and five and a half sacks, and is coming off of 15 tackles and four sacks last year. Not to mention, he was named first team all Big Ten. Then in the second round, the Dolphins took offensive tackle Patrick Paul out of Houston. He didn't see the field much in his first two years in college. He redshirted his first season and did start the last three games of the year, but then he only started in two games in 2020 before suffering a foot injury. But finally in 2021, he started in every game for the Cougars at left tackle and was first team all AAC in 2021 and in 2022. In 2023, Paul decided to come back to Houston and went on to be named first team all Big 12 after Houston made the jump to the conference. Miami didn't have a third round pick because if you remember, they got in trouble for tampering with Tom Brady and Sean Payne. 
Paul obviously helps the line, but the Finns have brought in some great playmakers. In the fourth round, they took Jalen Wright from Tennessee. He just consistently got better each season in Knoxville. He had 400 yards as a freshman, 875 yards as a sophomore, and just had over 1,000 yards as a junior, where he was named second team all SEC. The Dolphins took two wide receivers on day three. Both, funny enough, last names are Washington. Malik Washington is a guy that I got to see play a couple of times last year, actually, against NC State, Virginia Tech, and at Maryland while he was playing at Virginia. He had a combined 371 yards in those three games. He was super fun to watch and was just fantastic. He had 1,426 yards, nine touchdowns on 110 receptions. He had 100 plus yards in all but two games, including a 97 yard game at BC. He was just unreal, and it was a huge breakout season for him after he left Northwestern after four seasons. Coming to UVA, he was coming off of 700 yards yards and only one touchdown in 2022. Miami also took Taj Washington out of USC. He's coming off of easily the best season of his collegiate career with over a thousand yards and eight touchdowns catching passes from Caleb Williams. Before that, he had three seasons with at least 600 yards dating all the way back to his redshirt freshman season at Memphis. The Finns' other two picks at the draft were both on defense. Defensive end Mohamed Kamara in the fifth and safety Patrick McMorris in the sixth. Kamara played at Colorado State for five years. He really broke out in 2022 and was second team all Mountain West after he had 44 tackles and eight and a half sacks. But he was even better last season. He was the Mountain West player of the year and had 56 tackles and 13 sacks. Then McMorris had his own dominance in the Mountain West. He was a two time first team selection during his time at San Diego State. And last season, he had 90 tackles at Cal. Miami had some good picks and filled a lot of holes. Put that together with some already good players on the team and the Finns have a chance to be very good. When you talk about the Dolphins, the first names that really come to mind are Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. We all know that Tyreek Hill is a freak, both on the field and apparently in the sheets. Want a lady in the street, but a freak in the bed. He has six kids, including three born last year to three different mothers. He's still a good eight kids off of Antonio Cromartie, but give him a little time. He's still young. Tyreek led the league last year in both kids born and and receiving yards with 1,799. He found the end zone 13 times, tied for the most in the league. It was tied for the second most catches in the league with 119. He has six 1,000 yard seasons in eight years in the pros, and now was at over 1,700 yards in both seasons he's played in Miami since being traded by the Chiefs. Jalen Waddle is the other true stud on that offense. He had over 1,000 yards last season for the third straight year after being drafted in 2021 out of Alabama. On the ground, Raheem Mostert is coming off of a bonkers year at 31 years old. He managed to not just rush for over a thousand yards, but had 18 touchdowns. 18. It's the best year of his long career, and it's not even close. The O-line looks a little different this season, obviously, because we talked about Connor Williams leaving and Aaron Brewer signing, plus drafting Patrick Paul. But they did re-sign Isaiah Wynn, and both Teron Armstead and Austin Jackson are still at tackle. On the defensive side of the ball, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb are coming off of injuries. Jalen Ramsey and Javon Harland are there in the secondary with now Fuller and Poyer, and David Long Jr. will play on the inside with Jordan Brooks and Anthony Walker Jr. now. I think it's pretty clear that Miami has a very good team. It just hasn't all come together in recent seasons, but be patient, it's coming. At least I think.